Welcome to Chapter 11, Understanding Communication at Work. Communication is effective when there's a common understanding between the people communicating. Effective communication is the basis of successful relationships, peace between countries, and corporate success. A friend of mine was telling me a story about how she took a road trip with her husband and she told him, I'm hungry and I have to go to the bathroom. And she told me when she says this, she means right now. She's hungry right now. She has to go to the bathroom right now. Whereas her husband thinks that means within the next two hours or so. Do you think they have a common understanding? One study on communication found that verbal components Basically, words make up 35% of communication, whereas the nonverbal makes up 65%. What are all the things that go into nonverbal communication? Things like your posture, facial expressions, your hair, clothes, eye contact, gestures that you make, how close you stand to the other person, tone of voice. Other studies suggest that your words only make up 7% of communication. Verbal intonation the tone of voice that you use makes up 38%, whereas facial expression and physical posture make up 55%. Here are a couple of examples of when your tone of voice and your physical posture don't go along with the words you're saying. The words you're saying don't mean very much. For example, let's say someone that you cared about was standing in front of you with their, with their arms folded firmly in front of them and they say, I love you, that probably wouldn't mean very much. Or have you ever seen a parent walking through Fred Meyers and they're trying to get their child to behave, but they don't want to cause a scene, so they say in a very nice voice to their child, you better sit down or else when we get home, I am just going to spank the heck out of you. They don't get the desired result out of their child because their tone of voice and their body language doesn't go along with the words that they're saying. Personal space is important to most of us, and depending which culture or country you're from, it can vary a great deal between, uh, between people. Intimate space is between 18 inches. This is when you see friends together or partners together. Casual personal is one and a half to four feet. You usually see, see this between coworkers. Social consultative is four to 12 feet. Uh, this is you possibly working with a banker and public space 12 feet and up generally we don't like people too close to us especially if they're in strange places so if our personal space is important to us how do we go about protecting it well some of us use markers things like have you ever left a bag or a coat on a chair that you're using maybe in a theater or in a restaurant to save your space right how about tenure. This is when, let's say, you're taking a college class and you use the same chair every night. It's yours, right? So if you see someone else sitting in it halfway through the semester, that's going to be a problem. Or have you ever had a friend your spot for you? It's the idea that you like to protect your personal space. How important do you think appearances in communication? What about things like attractiveness and clothing? Do those things make a difference in what we communicate? Have you ever rolled out of bed first thing in the morning and clothed your hair? Yeah. What question do you make about this couple in this picture? Do you think that your personal appearance makes the difference in how others communicate with you? We spend a lot of money on how we look, so the assumption is it must make a difference. Does how we're dressed affect impressions of people who don't know us more? Yes. Dress affects people who know us much less. That's why we generally wear a suit when we go to a job interview, because those people don't know us. We want to make a good first impression. Whereas when you hang out with your friends, you probably don't dress up for them, right? They know who you are. You don't need to make a great impression with a flashy suit. Let's talk more about the nonverbal cues, like body language. What are some things that body language can convey about us? Well, it can communicate if we're in a hurry, if we're attracted to the person that we're looking at, if we're nervous. Touch. Touch can communicate if we feel affection towards someone, or it can also convey sexual harassment. Um, it can also communicate that we're getting ready to tackle a quarterback on the field. 
facial expressions sure communicate a lot, right? If you're in a restaurant, can you easily pick out the couple that is getting ready to get engaged versus the couple that's getting ready to break up? Eye contact. Generally, people who are lying uh, have a difficult time looking someone else in the eye. Eye contact also said a lot, says a lot about cultural differences, whether um, the eye contact is maintained, if eye contact means that you're listening to the person that you're talking to, or that if by looking away you're showing respect for the person. Vocal cues, how something is said is very important. Have you ever gone into a building and your hands are full and someone's right in front of you and you're hoping that they'll hold the door open for you, but they don't. So you're struggling trying to get the door open and you say, hey, thanks. That's a vocal cue, indicating that you're not very pleased. 